Welcome to a very, very special 2020 Coffs Cup preview. And we've even got the man himself, Tim Saladin, who runs the joint up there to appear on the show to give us uh, some of the uh, local knowledge that he undoubtedly has. G'day, Tim. G'day, yeah, Mark. Uh, thanks, thanks for coming on, Tim. Much appreciated, mate. You're doing an awesome job up there and you set up a beautiful Cup Day program with lots of horses and lots of betting opportunities. So much appreciated in this very difficult time of COVID. <laughs> Nigel, <laughs> Nigel, thanks for coming on. You're going to be a key member on the panel on Thursday. Obviously, we've just had a cursory glance at the card, perhaps a, a slightly deeper look at the Cup at this stage. But um, first of all, Tim... I see that you haven't raced here for, since the 22nd of May. What does that mean for Thursday? Yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly very uh, fresh, new, lush pad, but uh, two washouts in a row. We lost our meeting in June and uh, obviously the prelude meeting in July. So I uh, uh, certainly think it'll be soft six is going to be the mark. And uh, yeah, back to true fresh pad. It, it should race really well, but... Uh, uh, yeah, stay in race and then an 800, the first two, then maybe may a bit hard to get a pattern early. Oh, you've been watching too much racing rant. <laughs> uh, what, I, what I'd like to know, um, Tim, is is there a camber in the straight for drain off? You know what I mean? So could, could we no. see fence being good early? Oh. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. I'd agree with that, yeah. Yeah, even the way the drainage is in, at Coffs, it's sort of... Uh, reverse drainage to most tracks, the way they put it in. So I, I think that's a fair point. It's funny because I remember those Coffs Cup carnivals of you know years gone by when they raced on the Sunday, the Wednesday, the Thursday, and it was either hard, hard rails or hard, hard out rail, outside rails. It was just, a, and they were always heavy 19s. Um, but obviously, this is, a, this is a very different track. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a, it does race. I think it race a lot fairer. They spent a lot of money on it with the drainage, obviously. And, um, yeah, I, I do think, but that uh, possibly that inside pad that I think the last meeting was a cutaway meeting as well. So the actual true pad around the circle and the home straight is dead yeah. set. has been touched probably since early May, if that. Nigel, have you got an opinion on how this track may play? I think last year we, um, we were expecting something like Tim's just described. But I can remember that... Defence actually wasn't wasn't the best place to be. No, um, I can remember that eight hundred metre race and the yes. horses. And that Agent Pippa, Agent yes. Pippa, and we thought, okay, well, this is drawing barrier one at Leeds, but all stands sat four wide and just sailed straight past it at the three hundred. Yeah, I, a bit about race shape, I think. Um, and and I sort of found that throughout the day they were sort of coming about four or five wide all the winners and, and but by not the too far off the face I thought it was just just off the speed exactly so the once the jockeys worked it out after about three races the horse in the one one was actually in the best spot because it was the first one that sort of went straight to that four out position yep and then yep. the horses that were cutting back to the inside and coming wider mm -hmm. weren't making ground on them all right, so we've, we're kicking off with the Ken Howard uh, race one. I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure Ken is um, well. He doesn't care these days, does he? But uh, you've got a runner in this race, Tim Saladin, and um, he looks a key chance. Although uh, his preparation looks a, a touch, uh, well, <laughs> awkward. Uh, is that because of the way the the, the, the meetings have uh, fallen off? Uh, funnily enough, that was the prep that was marked out the day he. Uh won the 2000 metre race uh, back in May. So he uh, hasn't missed a run and the idea was always to trial him, go to the South Cup and then uh, give him a month between runs. Okay. Uh, he, of course, won the nightcap here last year and I happened to be lucky enough to, to be standing near you and there was there were celebrations galore. Um, it was uh, rather you... aggressive betting too, wasn't it, Mark? Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it, a little it, bit... It, it looks a steady race and you look a key chance in this race. Uh, I, the only other horse I was sort of interested in is Ready for Danger. Obviously won the, um, won the, uh, the country uh, feature staying race, the 2000 metre race that run at Rose Hill for the Saturday prize money last, uh, last October. His form's been somewhat inglorious since then, but he's had a quiet prep into this and Hieronymus uh, um, comes up to ride. 
Um, does anyone want to say anything else about this race other than... Uh, it's only two chances in the race, and you, you have to be go away from ready to danger. Um, ready for danger, sorry. Um, yeah. Ready for danger has done nothing in its last four starts, so it could be gone. But if it did come back to its peak figures, it would win this race. Um, but the one that's obviously been targeted at this race and has better recent form is Galway. But uh, we're talking about 2,000 metres in a very tricky affair. Um, I wouldn't be betting aggressively. Yeah, and uh, look, I don't want to spend too much time on this race, but Shamasal, is he keen for a run in the, in the, uh, in the feature, um, Tim? Do you know? His first yeah, definitely. That, that was their preference. Uh, if it had got a run in the cup, they would have had to have taken it out of the uh, canal, so they're desperate to run in the cup. Okay, all right. That, that looks likely. Uh, Nigel, you, you don't want to say anything about this race. You're keeping your powder dry? That's all right, yeah. Okay. Uh, race two, the 800, where uh, Agent Pipper was the key runner last year. And uh, from gate one, she got uh, crowded up and was never comfortable. Um, it uh, is a race that uh, I thought, looking at it, uh, your stable there, the Brett Dod Dodson stable, Tim, is in a step, looks a a likely type, but she has drawn gate one. She's relatively lightly raced. Um, you know, she's only a low grader. And I thought the other one uh, of interest on first blush was another Sin, who's resuming off the uh, the Wagga Town plate. Uh, any comment on the on the on the local there in a step, Tim? Uh, possibly uh, getting towards the end of its prep, to be honest. Okay, and Gord, uh, have you have you cited anything in this race that? Oh, well, the, right. the horse, the three horses with the best figures by an absolute country mile are one, two, and three, and they've got um, what is it, sixty-five and a half, sixty-five and a half, and sixty-one. I, I think there's another horse that might have the opportunity to um, knock them off. Nigel did mention track pattern there, um, and at the odds, I would definitely have something on number eight, San San Marco. He is a uh, boyfriend of yours that um, you know is obviously uh, trained up on the mid north coast. Um, uh, this is a setup job, Mark. It's a setup job. I know, but 800 metres is just a it's 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 a bonanza. 800 metres. It's uh, of course it is. Of course. You know, it and is. All Stand is the reigning uh, is the reigning uh, champion of this race. Of course, he won the race last year at Long Odds. Um, Nigel, I'm brushing past you again. Is that right? Sure. Oh, it's it's wide open. Yeah, we'll um, we'll have to uh, narrow it down by race time. Yeah. Okay. So race three. Is this Katie Morgan's only runner for the meeting, Tim, uh, Ronan's Rock? Yeah, I think it's in a few other venues, so I'm not certain it comes. Certainly in the wrong lane in town in a highway last start, um, and Aaron Bullock to ride. It looks a key runner. Uh, the other horse... Yeah, it I is know. Alan Bullock going to ride. So, <laughs> so, so what's the story with Aaron Bullock, Gord? Well, I'm just suggesting it might be a scratching, that's all. Oh, yeah. what? It's just, what, because it's a Bullock? Well, A Bullock has actually like committed to a lot of meetings recently and actually not made it there. All right. So. Nigel is all over Aaron Bullock, so I'll go to you, Nigel. What's the story yeah. with Aaron Bullock? Oh, yeah. Well, I think um, he he didn't ride for about um, five or six months there. So, um, And he's come back a lot heavier. And, uh, yeah, he's often pulls out uh, with illness and, and, and all yeah, so sorts he's of fickle. excuses. But uh, he's down for about four or five rides. Here, yeah, yeah. So he's, on, say, he's on a good chance yeah. in the cup. So, yeah. So I'd say he'd be, and and, no, and none of them are at too light a weight. So I'd say that, you know, six, 59 kilos, Ronan rocks. That's Ronan's rock. That's definitely doable for him. I sort of thought the favourite here was uh, under the odds. Looked a bit um, suspect. Who is, who is the favourite? mine? Enterprise Karen. Yeah, well, it's a likely type. I mean, he's a he's a he's a good doer, John Shelton, and uh, he I, give I give it none. I give it none. none. Okay, I'm, with, I'm with Nigel. For anyone that looks at videos, have a look at the last hundred meters of this horse on its last two runs. See if you think it's running through the line, and then to, to my, on Thursday it's stepping up in this. Twelve hundred up to sixteen hundred. All right, so Gord, you've got something else to show to to, to throw at us. I haven't finished the race yet, but I'm going to have a very close look at number two, Hustled, and number five, Hanovy. Yeah, I and suspect we'll be betting against the favourite here. Okay, well, that's, that's good uh, good information because certainly Enterprise Karen looked uh, likely type to me. Tim, uh, any uh, any local thoughts there, or are you, uh, you, you, you um, staying? Uh, probably, probably with Gord, to be honest. I like the five, uh, the Paul Macquarie horse. Yeah, okay, Hanovy. Um, um, cut and rolls. Okay, uh, race four is uh, is a key maiden. It's uh, this was a, a good setup last year, was it? Uh, 
Warren Gavalock's horse down the bottom that uh, won this race was a bit of a... a, a yeah, Corendi. Corendi go. Uh, yeah. Might have been Corendi beat one of Duns and Bowman. I think Miss, Miss Peter was short. Miss oh, Pizzetta. yes, yeah, I may be thinking yeah. of the other race. Mm. Um, the, uh, the, there's a, a likely type that uh, Gord has already poured cold water on off, off here. It's Full Press, who <laughs> ran in the, in the Inglis uh, race at Grafton over the carnival. It uh, comes home for its second start. And uh, inside to outside, the other horse to me that looked likely was Great Marlow. Nigel, have you got any early thoughts on this race? Uh, yeah, very interested in the two-year-old full press. Okay, and Gord is, uh, is uh, you, you were saying none. Is that right, Gord? I'm saying it's a super open race. Um, I wasn't convinced about how much quality that run last start had. It's just that it's against, you know, lightly raced young horses. And, you know, most of these horses obviously battling around in maidens are uh, racing against, uh, you know, a, a, a patchwork. Well, the ones that I'll be interested in backing are, um, are horses that uh, are lightly raced as well. And it's, uh, it's not one of them. Um, but uh, I don't know. Uh, obviously, you know, is it Brett Dodson, Tim? Do you know? Yeah, yeah, very well. Um, scratch from Lismore, a very winnable race at Lismore on Monday. Uh, probably was the best track worker at track work Saturday morning. Yeah, I think it's the best bet of the Coffs team all day. There we go. Well, okay, that so scares me. Quite, quite no, no, none of that scares you, Gord. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's given you great confidence because you're going no, to it, know that, 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 that they're going to be, it's going to be stacks on. I'm not betting for myself on Thursday. I'm only betting for the... For the kids, I know, so. but we're we're investing on our opinion, which is very very important, and um and you know that's the key to the day. You might, if you see me sneak sneak off for a cigarette just before this race has started, <laughs> I can guarantee you I'm back in something else. <laughs> yeah, the stress reliever. All right, the uh, the other short course race on the day, the thousand meter fifty eight, and uh, pace stick is an interesting resumer there for the Dodson Yard. He's a horse that uh, had a big boom on him off his uh, debut win and resumed at Wyong and was. Uh, down the course, but at short odds, he's had uh, he's he's obviously had problems, and he's resuming off a bit of a spell. Um, the uh, the other horses that uh, seemed to me likely types in this race were Fair Dinkum, who's done a bit of racing in highways, Bozy Man, who's second up off a break, and Moonhawk uh, looked the other one to me. Uh, it's a local horse. Nigel, uh, anything to offer here? Again, looking to bet around the favourites uh, early. The favourites were uh, the two and the three. Yep. Um, so haven't narrowed down an, an alternate selection there, but, um, yeah, I just thought that they were short in the market and had a, quite a few risks. Yeah. It's, a, look, it's an intriguing race. Gord, any, uh, any first thoughts here? You know, I think there's two only two away. chances in the race, number two and number three, fair dinkum and number three pasty. All right. So my Nigel mentioned there at the head of the markets there. Uh, race six is the race that got unders one last year, but he won it first up this time. He's coming off a, uh, a 33-day break and coming back from a mile and coming out of one of the worst Sydney City races we've seen all winter. Um, this does appear at Snow Zone's mercy. Am I wrong here? I'm disagreeing. Okay. So Snow Zone being just turned four, he's, so he's been racing three-year-olds. Uh, he's got I guess, some, got I guess, I guess snow, so I got Snow Zone on top, but not six to four. Is it so. that short night? Yeah, yes. 240 bets. Okay. And that's with emergencies to come out. So it's probably more like a 220 even money shot at the moment. So. All right. Well, of course, Bella Star is, uh, is the second emergency here and uh, engaged in the last race. Uh, Tim, was there any indication that Bella Star wanted to run here rather than the last? Uh, no, I think uh, it chose its preference was the last. Okay. Um, All right. So, Gord, uh, what else are you looking at here in this, um, you know, uh, God Unders and Bolting Willie were features in this race last year, which is, well, you know, it's, uh, it's one of the, you know, feature race on the day. It's a fifty thousand dollar race, so it's. Hey, we we, we got the premier. Race. We got the premier rider on the program. We got the horse that has the best recent form. It's number one. Got unders. Um, do I get involved in horses that have eighty-one stars for eight wins? Uh, not very often, but, um, but I suppose what's what's eight times twelve? <laughs> it's less than a hundred. Nigel, what have you got to say about this? No, race? no, it's greater than its number of starts. Therefore, it might be positive value. <laughs> um, Nigel, have you had a look at this race? Just a brush Yeah, well, Stow Zone is tricky I mean, it was badly out of form at the start of this prep But uh, its last two runs have been terrific 
Uh, they have been on heavy tracks. It finds a slightly better track here. Uh, I think um, this, it's definitely got a class edge on, on everything else in this race. Um, so I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm undecided on whether it, it's value at that price, but it's, it does appear hard to beat. And uh, you've got a namesake here, Tim, in Tim's principle. Is it, uh, is it a horse that caught your eye? Uh, no, I'll probably just, I'd mention Vacate. Um, I think it, uh, behind two big Ferrari, it was, it was a little bit unlucky and then they actually got a sneaky jump out into it at uh, Grafton last Wednesday and uh, by all reports it was uh, fairly well high balling. So 15 to 1, I'd certainly be having something on Vacate. Yes. I think that's great information. Uh, but the other thing is, of course, that these sort of meetings provoke that sort of um, intel and it is great for betting, you know. Uh, you know, there are people that jump around, jump up and down and go, we want to know everything, you know. Obviously, you've mentioned there is a jump out. That's not in the form guide. But, you know, it, it, it is a feature. It, it's sort of a feature of races of days past where you'd have all these horses set up for races and doing things that you don't the power, know. The, the powers that be have to realise that actually increases turnover. Yeah, I know. I know, Gord. But, I, you know, it is also administratively difficult. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm not averse to um, a little bit of intrigue in races. To yeah, promote. same with me. By the way, I give Tim's principal a chance. So, oh. Yeah, well, I did mention it because I didn't think it was out of the race. Yeah. Um, oh. we'll, go to, we'll go to the nightcap because uh, we'll, we'll make the, uh, the feature, the Coffs Cup, um, the, the last segment of, and, uh, and perhaps uh, hive that off into a separate or a standalone segment. Um, the Class 3 over 1,200, so the 6th and the 8th are both over 1,200. Um, the horses I marked at first blush there were Loser, Snip, Lolly, Dolly, Sparks and Bells Approaching. Uh, Gord, um, have you had a look at this race? Tomorrow, number 10, Bells Approaching. All right, Matthew Dunn, Adam Hieronymus. That's obviously a key connection, uh, key connections there. That's a, a potent combination. Uh, Nigel, there's, some, there's some dangerous locals in there as well, which I think Tim will talk about because I'm particularly interested in what he says about Dazzling Charm. But, um... Um, yeah, I'd sort of agree with you, Gord Bell's approaching, but um, funnily enough, uh, the dots and runners, uh, Blevio would be the preference at this stage. Uh, yeah, it's, okay, that's number 12. It's worked, uh, worked very well. I think Lolly Dolly and Loser Snip, they're probably uh, the other two. I think, um, I think Dazzling Charm will uh, definitely need to run. Okay, well, this is brilliant information because this actually means that uh, Bell's approaching is an absolute moral. Um, on the subject of locals, I just want to ask you about Aidan Smithson, who was a scary, scary trainer 12 months ago. He seems to have been, um, well, keeping his powder very dry. Is it, What's the story? Yeah. The yeah, he's probably just had a lot of bad luck. Like, obviously, he got Hellenism and uh, got that tab highway, but then uh, I think it's feed issues with her. She's in and out of work. She's in the paddock. She's out of the paddock. Um, Couple of horses went amiss. Just sort of the the wheels turned the other way for a little while. But um, I know he's got a few new horses up and about. So hopefully in the next couple of months he'll be back. But yeah, he's sort of feeling it as much as anyone. That's for but sure. But he must be an absolute asset because he's a gun trainer. He does. Yeah, he, he, yeah. He's got some great ideas. He loves it. He uses the beach on the training tracks and. Um, yeah. yeah, he's a good fellow to have around. And as you say, he's uh, had a good grounding with his dad. And, uh, yeah, he doesn't leave any stone unturned when he does get one ready. Yeah, well, his dad's so famous, he even trained those fictional horses, monologue and epilogue. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, OK, so uh, we'll come back uh, We'll come back now. So what, 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 what's going Come on? back now. Do the spruik now, Mark. The, you know, because this is the bit that we're going to put on all the social media, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so this is the important bit. So, you know, we're very, very pleased. We're very pleased to have uh, Tim Saladin online because uh, he is the, the head honcho at Coffs Harbour. We've been up there for the last two years and I'm really missing not being there this year. Um, it's uh, And looking at your weather this week, Tim, I wish I had been there, you know, doubly. Um, obviously, you've got some nice fine weather leading into the cup. Uh, it might turn awry on Friday, but uh, everyone's uh, no one cares after the, uh, after Thursday. Um, but yeah, uh, Thursday is our first ever Rant Academy uh, in conjunction with PuntClub.com, and we're uh, we're staging a punters club on the Coffs Harbour Cup. 
and we're thrilled to do it. Uh, we've you know, managed to uh, lure Nigel into the team with uh, promise of giant appearance money and uh, hope, hopefully he justifies his, uh, his hefty fee. Um, on Thursday, we'll be, uh, we'll be marshalled at the uh, Georges River 16 footers in Sandringham and uh, anyone's welcome to come and uh, hang with us on the day because uh, it'll be thrills and spills, lots of excitement, entertainment and education because obviously we're going to be quite transparent about the way that we're going about betting on the card. Uh, we might be having a few at Kembler and uh, other meetings around the place. Uh, another reason why we've got Nigel, who seems to know every horse in Australia. And uh, look, it's, uh, it, it really is, it shapes as one of the, our most exciting days. Certainly our most Super exciting. exciting. Like, this is awesome. Years, yes. We're going to be there betting with, like, we're going to have a kitty, like, you know, um, well in excess of $60,000. We're going to be turning over that money on Coffs Harbour Cup. We're actually going to be able to ring Tim during the day and see what he's assessing the track at or whatever to give us a little bit of update. We're going to get all the inside information off all the pro gamblers all the experts that actually run the tracks and we're going to pull that all in to bet for you, which I think is a brilliant idea. And uh, there'll be, you know, uh, updates, uh, social media updates and, uh, you know, vision from, uh, from our... From anyway, our... More, hey, Mark, more importantly, let's find the winner of the cup because <laughs> there's some people that might want to buy, uh, buy something in the Calcutta if the one exists this year, Tim. Yeah, well, sadly, that's another casualty. The Calcutta's, uh, yeah, wasn't held this year. Well, so uh, yeah, the way to get involved is therefore to join Punt Club, uh, puntclub.com and get on to Rand Academy, which is uh, the betting pool for Coffs Harbour Cup Day 2020. And uh, the pool will approach three figures, I'm sure, and uh, sorry, six figures. And um, I, um, you, know, I, we're, you know, we're going to have a lot of fun with, uh, with what we're doing on the day. All right, so... I said I texted Tim after I had a quick look at this race uh, later earlier today, and I went, "This is a really it's a fertile race. I think it's a much better race than last year. Uh, it's got sort of more varied sort of um, uh, contestants. Uh, Nigel, you've obviously had a good look at this. This is your first port of call. Um, what what, uh, what struck you um, doing the form for this race? Yeah, well, pressure's on, Mark. We uh, obviously uh, found Love Chuck Baby last year and uh, see if we can um, come good this year. Uh, I suppose the first thing that struck me was that there are so many horses on 55 kilos. Yep. Uh, and some of those that are down the bottom of the weights, they're really probably carrying relative yep. weights wise 10 kilos more. They're out of the should. handicap, is what you're saying. I totally agree with you. Which. Yeah. which in effect means that those at the top of the weights are, are well in. Uh, two, of, two of the, obviously the top two um, ha, have sort of got um, proven city form in uh, Sikandrabad and La Pulga. Uh, Sikandrabad's got um, uh, Victorian metropolitan form and, right. and La Pulga has got recent um, Brisbane metropolitan form. Yeah, but he's coming back from the Grafton Cup. Um, that's a long way back in distance. Oh, I mean, they're, they're both double figures, um, but I think that, um, that they've got class edges there and, uh, and they're, they're, they're worthy of consideration and something that, and, and the alternative to those, I think, is, is Academy, which is coming off Sydney Metropolitan form and uh, was quite a nice run last start. So I think um, they're the three that I'll be concentrating on trying to uh, narrow down. Okay, the pace in the race looks pretty solid. You've got uh, the uh, the last start highway runner Rex who wants to wants to lead, but Jazzland is a bit of a desperate leader as well down there in four. Uh, Saxton Rock is stepping up in distance, and there's a well, uh, well and truly get forward horse. Zun Konig is a one batter that would you know really be best suited trying to hold them out from gate one, but I probably can't see that happening. But it certainly looks a, a decently run sort of race. Gord, uh, what caught your eye in this uh, field? Oh, well, for, for me, um, I, I think uh, Jazzland, uh, if it's going to win, needs to lead. And if it does lead, it's a, it's a good chance. Uh, I'd be very surprised if a jockey like Adam Hieronymus, who is the senior jockey on the program, um, isn't very aggressive early. On Sikandra Bad, who... Uh, no, uh, on Jazzland. Sorry, um, it's A Bullock on Sikandra Bad. You're right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Of course, no, no, he'll be aggressive for Look, sure. What, what I'm hearing, I want the inside information off Tim. Because he, he he's there. He's seen the horses. I, I yeah, want to know what he thinks. Cup. They're all trying, Gord. Yeah. Um, well, probably the only thing I can add is uh, 
Academy, uh, our chairman, he has a lot of horses with uh, Mark Newnham. Uh, he's been asking to bring a couple up for a few years. And so he's got him to bring one. And he apparently said to uh, AJ, our chairman, he said, oh, if I'm going to bring one up, I might as well win the race. So I'll send up Academy. So, uh, this will be heavily back to you because we've seen Curra be very, very prominent in the last two runnings of the Coffs Harbour Cup. And it was, it was barely a midweek horse in, in Sydney. Um, you know, this horse coming off, uh, th well, three-year-old, he's now just turned four, but he's, he's coming off the younger horse form. He's had four runs back. He's, he's gone 1,350, 1,400, 1,500, 1,400. A mile here is just... You know, everything's in order. It uh, you know, it seems like a... I think there's another suggestion here as far as the preparation of this horse is concerned, Mark, and that is that uh, you run over, you run you run on a wet track over 1500 meters, and then you go back to the 1400 meters, and then you come up to the Cost Carnival. Seems to me that uh, Mark Newman has definitely set this horse, at least after its first two runs, his preparation at this race, and that is always a good lead in when you have a senior metropolitan trainer set a horse. Um, in a country cup. That's that's a big lead. Um, I don't personally have it on top, but um, I won't be losing money. Oh, sorry, we won't be losing. How am I supposed to say it these days, Mark? Yeah, well, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it, it, it's an amazing race when you think of this horse that I don't really know, and it's coming back from an 1840-meter win in, at Eagle Farm, but The Kingdom, there's a horse running up there called Thy Kingdom, and there's a horse called The Kingdom. Um, it's run. It's won nine races from twenty three. It's actually won seven of its last eleven. Um, I think that that you know that, that's a horse that you know I was particularly scared of. And uh, Les Kelly and and A Malian, they're you know a pretty hot team as well. It, it must fit in there somewhere. I give it none. Anyway. Okay, uh, Gord, what are your chances in this race? Given that you don't actually have Academy on top, uh, you, you're mentioning Jazzland with that. Uh, it's going to sound ridiculous, but uh, the same three as Nigel. All oh, right, so Kandra bad. But I have them in different order. Uh, I have Sikandrabad on top. Um, right, yeah, I, raced, I, raced outside uh, Taikamachi and um, uh, the, the other gay horse. Uh, noble boy, Taikamachi. It was a listed race. I know it was a very listed, uh, a very weak listed race, but it had 1,000 metre trial, first up over 1,400 metres on a sticky track. It's got figures in its career which would just own this race. Um, Sam Kavanagh is definitely looking to make a statement with his comeback to training. Um, he's thrown the kitchen sink at this horse, and I'm getting thirteen dollars to find out. I clearly yeah. have it on top. No, absolutely uh, decent analysis there. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not running away from that at all. Um, what else, Gord? La Lapulga, you mentioned. As well, well, La Polga, but I never back it because I don't like Michael Costa, um, and that's just a personal thing. I just personally yeah, don't like him. What's the problem there? Because he's obviously a hot trainer. Why would you? Why would you dislike a hot trainer? Well, you know, I'm never biased as far as investing money is concerned. I try to take emotion out of it. It just seems like a smarmy, dodgy kind to me. He's ex Stewart, mate. You got to go easy on him. No! <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to go easy on ex-stewards because they've made the break. They're the happy men, aren't they? Yeah. You know? <laughs> you know the weird thing? Is, yeah. I mean, as far as form is concerned, second to another dollar there, two starts back in the group three, it's, um, is admirable. And by the way, I was only just joking then. The guy does a fantastic job for a young fella. I just, I just don't like it when young fellas get... Um, I don't know, more arrogant than they deserve, which is, is what he... Someone said. might say that about you, Gord. I'm not a young fella, Mark. That's right. You're even... Uh, it's you're like, not, I'll, you're look, not I'll, the youngest on this panel, for sure. Well, or, you know what? I'll give it to Tommy Sherry. Like, he's an arrogant little, little know-it-all. Yeah. I, I can still rate him accordingly as far so as does, his ability is concerned. their writing, I think, arrogance. Life. Arrogance assists your life. How many people have you seen that have been massively successful with no talent just because they had confidence? Yep. Any comment here on Saxton Rock, who um, is uh, Matty Dunn, Matty McGurran? Um, oh, we just had a philosophical lesson on the on the cup preview there too. <laughs> I know, you, get, you get a ton. You get a ton of content on the rant. It's not just about racing. <laughs> it's about life. And uh, we're missing uh, G Pollard, of course, on this preview show. Again. Well, what about he's suddenly become a socialist in his I old know, age? I no, finally got stuff. him, guys. I well, finally turned yeah, him into a coronavirus socialist. Coronavirus has done it to him. Um, uh, yeah, Saxton Rock has won, uh, well, one of the lead-ups, I suppose, the, uh, the 1400 at Grafton. Is that, that's not, is that the South Grafton Cup, Tim? 
No, it was only the McLean Cup on the last The McLean day. Cup, sorry. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not as good as the South Grafton Cup, but a horse that's fourth up into this race off a win and, um, and looks a likely type to me. I certainly had it in there, but uh, by the sounds of it, you guys are not interested in Saxon Rock. I'm only interested in three horses. All right, okay. Very it's good. Yeah. simple. All right. Well, we 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 will uh, perhaps uh, reconvene. Certainly, we're reconvening on Thursday to. Uh, Hold on. What's Tim's top three? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that wasn't yeah, brief, but anyway, we put him on the spot. Mm. Happy with Academy. I actually don't mind the Kingdom. It's A Malian's only ride, and uh, certainly agree with the top eight. It's yeah. a camper bad. Yeah. Very good. Well, we can't wait. It's only two more sleeps and uh, we'll be there at the George's River 16 footers. Um, we're welcome to come and join us. It's at Sandringham. We'll be in the bunker and we'll be betting all day on all meetings, but principally the Coffs Harbour Cup day, which is, um, I must say, it looks very attractive from this point of view and uh, fine weather leading into the, into the meeting. And, uh, you know, we could get to a track that's no worse than dead, although the, uh, the race club officials always want to tell you it's worse than it is. So uh, I'm sure that uh, the soft six <laughs> well, well, but, yeah, well, then look at Saturday, Mark. You know? Heavy nine they left it at. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but that's, that, that's a different kettle of fish completely. But anyway, last year when we were at Coffs, of course, we got overnight rain and the track was uh, downgraded. In fact, it started at 6 metres or 7, didn't it, Tim? Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this year, this year, we won't, we won't, you know, I'm pretty sure we won't get any rain into the uh, into the meeting. Obviously, we're not on the ground up there, and uh, nor, nor are it's going to be a beautiful track to bet on with lots of big fields. Like I, I'm going to, well, sorry, well, I'm not going to be turning over money. I'm going to be turning over the punters club money. Punters club money, exactly. But, yeah, exactly. And uh, it'll be it'll be good to to be a part of it. Um, Nigel, you'll um, you'll spend the next. Uh, 36 hours buried with your your head buried in in the form guide, not just for coughs, but the other meetings that are in play at, at uh, on Thursday that uh, that support the coughs Harbour Cup meeting. Tim, uh, you know we we might get a grab from you on the day, just uh, you know the, maybe a, a bit of a track walk, uh, an, hour, an hour or two out from the, the first race. That uh, that would uh, that'd be uh, awesome if you could do yeah. that, Tim. I'd, I'd, I'd be the curator. That. Curator's a bit uh, media shy, so he needs a bit of training. I'll get him out there. With Oh, do it together. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a real good head for radio, so you'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look forward to that. So in the bunker will be myself, Gord, Nigel and the Glenstar, who will be uh, doing his best looking at the uh, the parade from uh, Sky Racing 528, I think it is. And Tim, you'll be on the ground at Coffs Harbour. We'll, uh, we'll check in with you and uh, fingers crossed, it looks a bonanza. Can't wait. See you then. Thanks, Hoops. See you guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you.